I can't believe this video is finally happening, you guys. After a year and four months since taking apart Big Red version 3, I'm finally, finally gathering the parts to build my dream gaming PC, Big Red version 4. Ugh, just, I get goosebumps just saying that word out loud. But the biggest thing I've been waiting for this entire time was the case, you guys. And well, boys and girls, I finally have it right here at the office. So we're gonna unbox this bad boy, assemble it, and take a closer look at what my dream gaming PC will be built in. Hope you guys have some popcorn. Let's begin. Before we continue, I wanna give a huge thanks to Karma for sponsoring today's video. So I've been starting to shop for my new home and I came across some appliances that I wanted to pick up like this front load washer for the laundry room. Since I still had a few months left before the big move, I decided to add this to my list in case it drops in price later. To my surprise, I got a notification from Karma a month later letting me know the washer has dropped in price by $200. That's how Karma works. It notifies you if a product that you add to your list comes back in stock, drops in price, or has a coupon code available. You simply visit the Google Chrome store and you add it to your Chrome extension. Then you can visit any of your favorite retail stores and save items to your list. Karma will then notify you via email or through mobile push if that item comes back in stock, drops in price, or has a coupon code available. You can also create separate lists to better organize everything while you're shopping and if you come across an item that has a coupon code available, Karma will automatically apply it at checkout. But this feature is only available on a computer, so having the Chrome extension is a must. And finally, you can even get Karma cash on select retail partners. So if you guys want to save the most money while shopping or maybe you just want to get notified when a product you add to your list gets back in stock, drops in price or there's a coupon code available, then make sure to download Karma for free by using my link down below. So for those of you that have been following the channel for a long time, you guys know that I like to call my personal rig Big Red for several reasons. Big meaning high-end specs that are available at the time of the build, and then red because of, well, the color red. It just doesn't feel right abandoning the name at this point because it's got a sentimental value to it. You know, even though there's no more red in the color scheme, I wanna keep the name alive and well. Um, because it's like a trademark at this point. Oh man, this is one heavy, heavy case for sure. When you think about it, my setup has also kind of evolved with the PC. I now have this all white color scheme, which allows me to shift the colors to anything I want. I mean, let's face it, you guys, we all grow up, right? We are not the same person as we used to be years ago. A lot of our tastes change. Our taste in food, our taste in entertainment, women or men, I mean, I don't judge. You know, it's completely normal to change and have different tastes and things. Oh man, here we go, guys. <sighs> so one of the trademarks of Big Red, well, I should say signatures. One of the signatures of Big Red, other than the overkill high-end specs, is the unique factor. I don't like building in traditional boxy rectangular cases because I want my system to stand out compared to all the other cookie cutter builds out there. It is essentially the heart or the core of Big Red. Being so different is what makes Big Red, Big Red essentially. So that's why picking the right case is very, very, very important to me. And well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I can say without a doubt that this case has Big Red written all over it. So this top piece is the sheet of glass. Let's put this aside. Oh man. I get to finally touch it. <sighs> yes, yes. Just like I dreamed it, just like I dreamed it. <laughs> oh my God, dude, I'm actually just, oh, I'm so happy. Here is essentially the case. <laughs> it's called the Crow. I know the name, I'm not a big fan of the name, but let me just tell you guys, this is gonna be one sexy ass, high-end overkill system once I'm done with it. Uh, let me actually finish putting this together to kind of give you guys an idea of what it's gonna look like and if there's time Maybe throw in a few PC parts in here just to get that visual Representation I guess so here are all the components you guys needed to essentially assemble the case I know it looks very bland right now because of this sheet of aluminum, but 
Trust me, wait till the end of the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you guys remember the case I used for Big Red version 3, I built inside the Ragentech Payen. Um, this case is a very similar style to that case, as in it's gonna be open air, but the layout is gonna be completely different and it's far more advanced than the pan. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about when I, uh, when I do assemble this. So there are definitely a bunch of smaller pieces in here that I feel like I shouldn't take out. I should probably just leave it inside the box until I start putting this together. It's gonna be a lot easier for me to find them as well. So you know what, I'll keep it inside the box while I am putting this entire thing together. So it comes with a piece of paper, kind of tells you what's inside the box. And then there is a QR code on the bottom here, which will show you the assembly video. The price of the case alone is enough to make a grown man cry and probably make you look elsewhere. This is why I'm confident that there are not gonna be a lot of builds like this out there in the wild. Like this is not for people who play Osu on the weekends, okay? This is for like the elite enthusiasts out there who wanna just build something insane that just sets it apart from every other PC in the world. So there's one thing I wanna point out with the packaging um, so far. It's a very small nitpick, but I will love some sort of cutouts on the side of you know, the components so it's easy for me to stick my finger in and kind of pull out the parts. Like there's no way for me to dig in and pull out these digital plates. So it's gonna be kind of difficult getting some of these parts. Even the pump, there's no, well, I guess the pump is kind of easy to pull out, but yeah, the, the digital plates, for example, there is no way. I'm gonna have to stick something inside these um, outlets and pull it out that way. Oh my God, I shouldn't have done that. I should have not done that and I think I scratched it already. This is this is fantastic. Ah, uh, okay, well I'm never doing that again. Okay, so how the hell am I supposed to get the damn digital plates out of here? I might do something wrong, hold up, hold up. I haven't even started the build and I'm breaking stuff. God damn, dude. Okay, so this whole piece comes off. It's probably the worst unboxing video I've done. Can I push this out from the bottom? No, I can't. There's not even a cutout. There we go. We got it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice digital plate. You can uh, definitely see where the scratch is. So hopefully with the coolant inside, it's not gonna be as noticeable, I hope. But yeah, I mean. Such a stupid mistake on my end. So in case you guys haven't noticed at this point, this is not a regular traditional desk PC. You don't put this on your desk. This is actually built so you can mount it against the wall. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be adding these wall spacers on each corner. And this is how much space you're gonna get between the back of the case and your wall to pass through the cables and obviously do any type of cable management. So we're just gonna put one in each corner here. I feel like when you build inside of a case like this, this is even considered a case though, when you build inside something like this, it's no longer considered a PC build. I feel like, I feel like you're building a work of art. Oh, this has my logo on here. I don't even know what this is, but that's cool. It's got my logo engraved on there. I guess we'll figure out what this is later. All right, so already I'm having a problem trying to put together this case literally on the first step and I can't figure out what the hell I'm doing. The video tutorial is not much of a help, unfortunately. It's not very detailed and doesn't really tell you what part I'm supposed to use or what piece I'm supposed to use over here in the corner. There are two different types of wall spacers. There's one that has a peg coming out of it. And I don't know if this is supposed to go facing down over here or if it's gonna go on the opposite side of the case. Like there is no Oh, this is frustrating. There is no instructions at all. I would have preferred to just get a piece of paper with the instructions on here. Like, you know, sometimes video tutorials aren't the best. But you know what? I'm just going to YOLO it. Hopefully, we'll figure it out towards the end when it's completely done. You know what? In that case, I'm not going to tighten all four of the screws. I feel like three is enough. Another thing that the tutorial doesn't show you is what size pegboard I'm supposed to install on the front, I'm, just, I'm assuming it's the big one, obviously that's, that's the one that makes the most sense, but it wasn't, it wasn't specified in the video.
All right, pegs have been officially installed. Who knew pegging something would be so fun? So I guess the next step would be to install the power supply shroud. So this is the power supply shroud, interesting. So I guess the, um, the price of the case is kind of justified because I haven't seen a single piece of plastic or cheap material in here. We're talking an all aluminum case with a giant sheet of tempered glass panel and it's, it looks like everything is also CNC machine as well, which is good because obviously I want a very solid case for Big Red version 4. I will not settle for anything cheaper. I don't know how this is a power supply shroud, but apparently the power supply sits in here somehow. This is all very, very interesting and exciting to me. All right, now it's time to install the power button. So this one's going to be actually located right here underneath the case and since I'm going to be mounting this on the wall I will be putting in a uh, wireless power switch option on here so I can turn it on using either remote or using my smartphone there are some pretty cool options out there so I'll go ahead and put this in here just temporarily just for the sake of the video but I will be swapping this out with the um, a wireless switch instead so yeah there's a switch unfortunately they did not send over the power button so <laughs> I guess they forgot to send that over I haven't even started the build and I'm breaking stuff. God damn, dude. So I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. All right, so next up is the, um, the power supply shroud, I guess. So this portion goes here. Let me just bring out my power supply just to kind of see what it's gonna look like. So this is the original power supply from Big Red version three the AX1600, a monster, fully modular power supply. So I'm guessing the fan sticks out this way. This is the most logical. And then the holes on the back of the power supply mount to the holes on this bracket over here. Oh, you can also kind of adjust the, um, the position too. So there are three notches here. So it gives you kind of options over here. So this goes here and I'm guessing this portion sits over here oh okay i see what they're doing here it's kind of it kind of helps cover the um the cables coming out from this side okay i get it that is pretty cool that's, that's really cool design definitely this uh if i do end up using this power supply i'm definitely gonna be painting this portion white the black just sticks out way too much and i'll most likely skin the sides over here and do something about that all right guys, so here is our first potential problem using this power supply. And this is a perfect example of why I'm doing this video to see if I'm gonna run into any issues when I begin the build. Perfect example. So this power supply is way too long. I have pushed this all the way to the left. And if I do cover this, well actually let me take this off. You guys can see how much space I have left to run through the cables. This is not enough, you guys. Look how much of the cutout this power supply is covering. More than half of it. More than 50%. This sliver, this slit over here is definitely not enough to pass through custom cables. Um, yeah, that's, that's already an issue right here. So this means I'm not gonna even be able to use the AX1600 iPhone Corsair. So I'm gonna have to downscale a little bit, or downsize I should say, to maybe a thousand watt power supply or a 1200, but definitely a smaller form factor than this. All right, here's a thousand watt power supply from EVGA just as an example. So yeah, look, look at that. Look how much more space there is to easily route the cables underneath it. So I'm gonna have to go with a regular ATX form factor for the power supply. All right, so next thing to install are these, um, I guess, motherboard spacers, that's what it's called. They basically sit right on the case and then the motherboard sits right on top of these standoffs. This provides a bit of space between the actual case and the motherboard. I was told that this works with full-size ATX motherboards, but I'm not really sure if it's gonna work with the, uh, the motherboard I have in mind. And the motherboard I have in mind is this bad boy right over here. The ROG Maximus 13 Extreme Glacial. I'm sure you guys have seen this from the uh, previous unboxing video, but I'm afraid that this board is not gonna fit. So you know what, let's just, again, the point of this whole video is to figure out 
and see what parts I'm gonna be end up using anyways. So yeah, this might or might not be the motherboard I'm gonna be going with for Big Red version four. Reason being, we're very close to the Z690 motherboard launch from Intel. So I just wanna wait and see what Intel does with their Alder Lake processors. Because to be honest guys, I'm not a huge fan of the Z590 platform. So if they do impress me with their new CPUs, I might just jump ship and go with a really nice looking board for that. And yes, I did decide to stick with Intel for my main gaming rig because I'll be going with AMD for my separate streaming PC. There's, I'm building two systems for my setup, but anyways, yeah, uh, that's a different topic for a different video, but I am sticking with Intel and an NVIDIA graphics card for my main system. But any whoosies, let's see if this board is even gonna fit, to be honest. Man, I have not seen a case design quite like this anywhere else in the years of building PCs. You can definitely tell a lot of thought and planning has gone into this, into this case, except for the name. There, there hasn't been a lot of thought in the, in the name, but the rest of the case, yeah, I'm impressed. I got a feeling there were a lot of trial and errors. I can't even reach around to do this one. Oh, maybe from here I can, here we go. I'm just hoping that Intel brings back a 10 core processor for their flagship CPU. If they do that and the gaming performance is stellar compared to AMD, then I just might stay on Intel, on Intel platform. But that would depend on what's gonna happen in the next few weeks. Luckily, I am gonna get my hands on their new CPU and a Z690 motherboard to test it out, so. Yeah, we shall see. All right, so the motherboard sits on these standoffs. And the cool thing about these is that you can actually adjust where the standoffs go on these brackets. So that's, that's really good. That is really good ingenuity. So anyways, I'm just gonna put this here. Oh, the standoffs align actually perfectly. Oh, okay, so that's what I was afraid of. Look how far the motherboard extends out to blocking off the cutouts here to pass through the 24 pin cables. Oh, that is, oh, even the bottom portion here is cut out. Look at that. I literally have no place to run even the GPU cables. This is a very tight fit, you guys. That's, that is not gonna work. Oh man, that is unfortunate. Should I just go micro ATX, honestly, and call it a day? It's gonna look so weird going with a micro ATX board though. Do I have one here? Hold up. So unfortunately, I don't have a micro ATX board, but I do have a full ATX. So let's, let's see how this would work. Okay, I mean, it's, it's still a little bit better, but... Oh, you know what? I can adjust the standoffs. Hold up, hold up. I can adjust the standoffs. I can put them here, but we do have some nice clearance between the bottom of the board and these two cutouts here. So um, I think full ATX is the way to go if I'm being honest with you guys. And then we do have some space underneath here as well um, for the graphics card, so. But yeah, it looks like full ATX is the, is the way to go. This is my only option here, unfortunately. Actually, no, I can't. I can't even do that. Because if I move the whole board this direction, it's not gonna be sitting on anything. Oh man, I did not even think about that. So this is it, this is all I got here. We're gonna have to train these cables really, really hard so we can get that nice bend straight in there. Oh man, okay. Okay, this this is, um, it's gonna be tricky, but you know what? My name's Ed, I got this, I can do this. So the next thing we're going to install is this thing, which is apparently the GPU bracket. This is supposed to hold the graphics card in place. I have no idea how, but I guess we'll find out. Now, in terms of what GPU I'll be using for the build, I've decided to go with just a single 3090, unfortunately. Um, I was planning on putting in two, but I, it, I don't know, man. It's been, NVLink is dead, SLI is dead, and I'm gonna be building two separate PCs, so that's kind of why I wanna put a 3090 in this one and then 3090 on the other PC instead of just putting two in this one, which I know will be a complete waste. And I just, I can't, I can't bring myself to do that, unfortunately. 
One of the things I like about the GPU bracket is that there is a lot of adjustability here. So it's gonna let me do a perfect run from the graphics card to, I think, I'm guessing one of the digital plates on the opposite side. So I love it. I love when there is options or flexibility. All right, so the case is um, coming along nicely actually. What do you guys think so far? I don't know what I'm gonna do with these aluminum accents. I need your help, you guys. Let me know in the comment section. Should I just leave it as is? Or should I paint it in white? Just white out everything, even the standoffs on here. I'm kind of conflicted. The aluminum does look nice with the white, you know, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. What, what do you think will look nicer? So anyways, I can't take this time to install the hard drive cages and SSD trays, but I'm not going to put any in the build. I like to stick to M.2 drives just for convenience and less cables to deal with. So I guess we'll put on the digital plates instead. So I'm gonna have to put these spacers on behind the digital plate before I secure it to the case. So last but not least, we have to install the uh, the pumps, or I should say the housing for the pumps. In the beginning of the video, I assumed that the case would come with D5 pumps, but that is not the case. You have to actually buy them separately, which is fine, I guess. You know, but you know, for the price of the case, I was assuming they would have included a couple of those D5 pumps. I mean, what what, what do they go for normally? Like 20 bucks or something? It's not that expensive. Oh man, oh man, what do you guys think? There it is. There is the Crow, AKA Big Red version four. It is looking majestic. I cannot wait to start on this build. I gotta know what to do with these um, aluminum accents though. Kind of matches the digital plates to be honest, cause there's a bunch of aluminum screws inside the digital plates. So maybe I'll just leave them. Let me know what you guys think about the case down below as well. The installation was Fairly straightforward for the most part. We had a bumpy start because of the unclear instructions on the tutorial of the video, but other than that, everything else was pretty easy. I still don't know what this is for, by the way. The thing with the TS logo, I'm gonna have to email them and figure out what this is. Hopefully it's not a big um, important component of the case. So yeah, you guys can kind of get an idea how the build's gonna look like. We do have spaces here for uh, up to 360 millimeter radiators on both sides. I'll try and put some components on here to kind of give you guys a better visualization, I guess, on what the build is gonna look like. But of course, it's gonna be completely different once I do water cool everything. I did also end up with four of these pegs, smaller pegs than the ones I installed. I'm guessing this is just for preference. This, it does make kind of sense, I guess. It depends on how deep your runs are gonna be. So let's say from the graphics card outwards towards, I don't know, radiator, you can kind of adjust the spacing between the glass and the case. So I might just go with the smaller ones at the end of at the end of the build, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I mean that's pretty much it for the build. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys are excited for Big Red Version Four, smack that like button. I gotta know. I gotta know how many of you guys are excited for the build. It's been a long time coming, and I'm super super excited, you guys. As you can tell my voice is pretty much gone at this point. But damn. Oh, I forgot about the glass. Um, so yeah, they sent me clear glass. It's not tinted whatsoever. I was expecting a smoked. Uh, tempered glass panel because they do have that option on there and personally I think that will look amazing with this build especially at night with the lighting just kind of illuminating through the tinted glass panel so I'm gonna email them and see if they can send me a, a tempered one or a, a smoked one I should say and I can go ahead and send this one back but yeah it's pretty much it for the video guys hope you enjoyed it hope you're excited for what's about to come got some juicy juicy builds coming up I'm gonna finally finish the dual PC part two that's coming up as well guys in a few weeks so stick around i'll drop a link to the case below if you guys want to check out the crow and uh yeah let me know in the comment section if you guys um what you guys think about the case thank you so much for watching as always guys and i'll see you very soon in the next one don't forget to download karma using my link below if you want to get notified if a product you saved comes back in stock drops in price or has a coupon code available